Welcome to Lawmen, a podcast about local legends and obscure curiosities from days of yore. I'm James Shakeshaft. And I'm Alistair Beckett King. Boy, oh boy, Alistair, I've got some updates for you. Oh, yeah? I've got some breaking news from 10 years ago. Wow. Yeah, we're going back to Derbyshire. I can't wait, but also I don't need to. <laughs> we're going back to Derbyshire. We're going back on the hunt for the mermaid. No! It's the clutching hands of Blake Meerpool. Hello, James. How are you? I'm well, thank you. How are things at your end? Very good. I've just been on a holiday. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I went to the Peak District. The top district? Yes, and it was peak rainy weather. Oh, yeah. We did have a couple of days, and we went up a hill, and I tried to find the mermaid's pool again. Oh, James, when will this quest end for you? When I find the mermaid's pool. Ah, you've got that little sort of cabin with all notes about mermaid's pool written on the wall, question mark, and then arrows and string. You've got a family, James. You've got responsibilities. You can't be looking for a mermaid's pool the whole time. No, I know. No, I found out. Yeah. (laughs) I think I got quite close to it. (laughs) I'm getting close. I can feel it. But I didn't make it. But Alistair... In my research about the mermaid's pool in Hayfield, go and check out our previous episode about Hayfield mermaids from series two, no less. And don't forget the field report where you fail to find it. Yes, and there's probably a new one of them coming out soon as well. Oh! Spoiler alert. Leave it! Oh, oh, (laughs) sorry, spoiler alert. (laughs) But, Alistair... Can you hear that? What's that noise? Is it the sound of Ghosts Over Britain? No, it's what, no? Breaking oh. Mermaid oh, News. I forgot. I've confused our, our noises there. I think it's the same noise. Is it the same noise? Is that the mermaid ticker tape ticking? Yes, it is. It suddenly sprung back into life. Oh, what's this? And all, all, the, all the mermaid watch computers have sprung back on because, Alistair, I've found another mermaid. In the Peak District. Another mum In the Peak, in the same region? Yes, there's a Which fourth. has made your failure to find one more absurd. Yeah, yeah, a little bit. If there's four of them. I found evidence of, a, of another. The previous time we recorded about mermaids in the Peak District, I had a terrible migraine. And I've re-listened to the episode. And yeah, you can tell. <laughs> I didn't notice. But I seem to have missed this fourth mermaid but a lot of people seem to miss the mermaids they're miscounted as like they're only being two in the whole of the area but it seems there's four any number is impressive considering it's not principally a water-based region yes it's peak not lake district yeah it's, it's not the trough district but there is another pool do you endorse it no not endorse <laughs> it well uh, actually by the way the in just a quick note on my county blindness, this pool is reported as sometimes being in Derbyshire, sometimes being in Staffordshire. Now, as far as I can tell, the pool has not moved, but I think the county mm. lines may have. I've got a new pamphlet called, well, new to me, called Folk... Papa's got a brand new pamphlet. It's called Folk Tales and Legends of Derbyshire by A. Rippon. A stands for Anton. This is published in 1982 by Minimax Books, which is a great name. They do small and big books. Nothing in the middle. If you want an average-sized book, look somewhere else. This is Minimax Books. Yeah, this isn't MIDI Books. (laughs) And the first chapter is Derbyshire Mermaids. And that first chapter, it obviously has the story of the Hayfield Mermaid. Again, check out the previous episode for that. And again, apologies for my migraine. Cut him some slack. Yeah. This mermaid is located at the Black Mere of Morridge, also known as Blakemere Pool or Blakemere Pond, and that has a mermaid. Now, the story goes that this mermaid, unlike the Hayfield mermaid, which can only be seen, as we know, on midnight of Easter Sunday morning, this mermaid can be seen any night at midnight 
usually by single men who it lures to their death. Mm, single men. <laughs> the pool is similarly murky, with no fish in it, refused by animals. So animals are turning their nose up at the pool, but single men are really interested. Exactly, yes. Ooh, just I'll just scoop a little of that pond water into my pot noodle. And then go home and warm it up. That's not how you make a pot noodle. No, no, you don't. You think a single man would know that? You don't put the water in cold and then heat the whole thing up. And you don't just get it from random pools in the countryside. You tend to get it from the tap. Very judgmental of you, James. Well, so according to A. Ripon in Folktales and Legends of Derbyshire, there is a story that many, many years ago, uh, and as this pamphlet was published in 1982 i'm gonna put an extra many there is a story okay. that many 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 years ago i've got to say i don't think the 80s was many years ago it was 40 years ago alistair i don't think it was it can't have been 40 years I've, ago. i've done the maths twice and it checks out Im- impossible it can't be more than 40 years okay well the, i'm sure we'll be getting letters about that letters <laughs> oh, i briefly pretended not to be old there and then i said letters <laughs> So there was a story, many, many years ago, some folk were drinking beer in the Cock Inn, and that's how the story begins. Yeah, I'm not just going to just gonna leave the name of that pub. I'm not going to try and make a joke. Lister can think of their own jokes. <laughs> I'm not going to do everything. On the pub sign game, it either scores <laughs> zero or two legs, depending on how you interpret it. So the guys were chatting about this mermaid that that draws you to your death. And this one guy was like, yeah, I'm not bothered. There's nothing there. I tell you what, I'd go there tonight. And this was a stormy night, Alistair. It oh, wasn't a not a stormy night. night. And the drinking companions were like, fine, let's bet. They bet five shillings, which I'd say it's tappable, but you might have to put your pin in. <laughs> it is, actually. in the, the original state pension in 1908 was five shillings a week. And the currently the basic state pension is £102.15. So that equivalent. It's about 100 quid. So okay, wow. He so went. it's about 100 quid. And Alistair, what's, what's to stop him just like going around, splashing in a couple of puddles, waiting an hour and coming back in and saying, yeah, I've been there, didn't see anything. There is a sort an automated ombudsman. What he said he'd do is he'd go there and he'd stick his stick in the ground and come back. And then in the morning they could go see and see that he'd been there. That's quite a clever little way of thought. Where did this mermaid come from? Let's just flash back to the mermaid origin story, shall we? And let me go to a little website I like to call Wikipedia. It's Wikipedia. It's Wikipedia. No. Yeah. No. It's not a reliable source, James. The local legend of Blakemere Pool tells of a beautiful young woman who rejected the advances of a local man named Joshua Linnett. Now... He was not happy with the rejection of those advances. I've started to editorialise now. Uh, And he managed to convince the entire town that she was a witch. Oh, Joshua Linnett. And basically, she was tested to be a witch. She was dragged by a horse and and they they did the old ducking in the pond. Mm. And she, of course, as is the way that you prove you're not a witch, died. Right. Well, nice work, Joshua Linnett. Well done. Well, took that well, mate. But with her dying breaths, she muttered a curse against Joshua. And three days later, his body was found. Dead body was found. <laughs> Whoa. Twist. Yes. I Next assumed you meant living body. To the pond. Good. No, it was, it was it, his dead body. It was his body. dead body, actually. Wow. Good. Finally. He's just found as... by the pond. With claw marks all over his face. Good stuff. Citation needed. <laughs> that is that is the wiki. So that is the lead. That is one of the origins of the mermaid. And I've done a bit more digging. I went to the blog imaginingstaffordshire.org. Mm. Mm. Imagining isn't a verb that suggests thoroughly researching, but okay. Blakemere Pool or Blakemere Pond is the scene of a number of mysterious drownings over the years. And in 1679, a body was dumped there by a local serial killer. A, a, a serial killer in, in like 1679? A serial in killer. In 1679, a serial killer dumped one of their bodies that they'd serially killed. That they serially killed. killed. And there. the people of the, of the 17th century went, oh no, a serial killer, a concept we have. <laughs> I think there's a serial killer out there. All right. 
Okay, well, I mean, far be it from me to question imagining Staffordshire. I am question. Footnote: I am questioning it. Yeah, I know. Yeah, <laughs> that was the, the subtext. There was that I do doubt whether that's accurate. Whether there there was such a thing as a local serial killer in 1679. At least they were local. <laughs> At least it wasn't one of them serial killers coming up from London <laughs> to its second, I don't know, hunting ground, oh, whatever yeah. they call it. Are you like holiday homes, is that? So they're, they're buying up all the properties so the local serial killers can't get a look in. One of the other origins for, for the mermaid in the pool is that it was a, a, a few hundred years previously a sailor from nearby town of thorncliff had fallen in love with a mermaid whilst at sea and brought her back and put her in this salt water pond so one of the origins of the mermaid was that she was already a mermaid she was a different mermaid one of them outsider mermaids that moved in and forced out the local mermaid population <laughs> priced them out of the pools so she's now a presumably. so she's now a freshwater mermaid having previously been a seawater mermaid well, I believe the pool is mysteriously brackish. Is it? Not a brinesome pool. It might be just that it's very peaty because there's a lot of peat peat bogs all around, not the baseballer. And a third origin story is that it was a witch trans- that transformed into a water nymph after being thrown in in the Middle Ages. But that sounds like a bit of a, a mix-up of the old, um, the old Linnet story. Yeah. That sounds like a variation on the same theme. But what is seen there is curtains or pillars of light floating above the water. So it could be a willow the wisp. Oh, yeah, the wisp. Willow Mm. the wisp, yeah. I was waiting for you to finish. I heard willow, but it could have been a willow anything. (laughs) But the wisp, you say? Yes, of the wisp. Um, The reason it's, it's shunned by the cattle is because it's this bog water, which is quite... It's not very tasty. I can't believe the cows don't want to drink this stinky, horrible, stagnant, peaty, <laughs> salty water. What's the matter with these cows? Hoity-toity. They're getting ideas from all these London cows. That are pricing them out of the fields? Yeah. Unbelievable. Mm. They want a latte. A peaty latte. The, the, the poshest drink I could think of. A, la- a drink you could buy anywhere in the United Kingdom. You could buy it from a petrol a, a garage. Latte. Can you imagine that? Milk in coffee. Can you? Yeah, you can buy it from a petrol station on Orkney. How <laughs> sophisticated. How metropolitan. Another source. This is a word this is from wordpress.com. Ludchurch is the name of this blog. These are some of the these are some of the worst sources we've ever had on the podcast. Hey, this I'm is I'm sorry. Some blogs are very good. I apologize. I mean, this is a podcast, so <laughs> This is from ludchurchmyblog.wordpress.com <laughs> forward slash <laughs> and imagine the hyphens places places of other local interest forward slash the mermaid of Blakemere forward slash the mermaid of Blakemere update. And this is from okay. 20, oh, 2014. Right. We've got new so information this was last 10 years as ago. of 2014. Still. Breaking mermaid news. So what it describes is two white hands that are said to rise out of the black waters and draw people passing by into it, known as the clutching hands of Blakemere Pool. Ooh, nice. Yeah. So I guess Blake comes from black. Yeah, Blakemere or Blackmere Pool. So me- and mere is, is the water. Yeah? Yes. So it's just yes. black water. It's not a mere pool. Or- it's bottomless. <laughs> no, it's it's very much the opposite. So the clutching hands of Blakemere Pool. There's a tale of a man who saw who was walking near Blakemere Pool and he saw the face of a woman with lace lappets around her face because it's something to do with like a bonnet over the top of a hedge. And he followed her and it turned out to be a woman in 17th century attire and she plunged into the depths of the pool and then the clutching fingers arose. But... And this is a quote here. But the man managed to fight the desire to plunge into the water. Sounds like someone let a cosplayer drown. <laughs> the, the hands reaching out are reminiscent of Jenny Greenteeth. Doesn't she have very long arms that reach out? She does. But these are particularly these are these are two white hands. And the Lud Church blog cites an article from I quote an old newspaper dated fourteenth of April nineteen fifty eight. They've done so they've done very well on the dating there. Yeah. Yep. Very an vague. old newspaper. Yeah. In our house, we always take an old newspaper. <laughs> yeah, I've got the an old newspaper app, and now I have to pay for it. <laughs> it used to be free. Solving the an old newspaper crossword. 
so I think they just had the top corner of an old newspaper, which just had the mm-hmm. date on it. And it says that Mr. Philip Davis of Stoke-on-Trent, who was a member of the North Staffordshire branch of the British Sub-Aqua Club, had decided to dive to determine the depth of the pond once and for all. And apparently the dive was made on the spur of the moment, but he had full frogman gear. On, he was wearing it. He just had it with him. That's that's how ready he was. Yeah. And wow. Alistair, the pond, the bottomless pond, was found to be approximately six foot with a muddy bottom. <laughs> We've all been there. So it was bottomed. So it was bottomed. It was a bottomed pond. Yes. Only six So did you say foot. it was about six feet deep? Yeah, and he dived in in full frogman gear. <laughs> <laughs> I recently found out that's a fathom. Yeah, me too. Did you do that quiz where it's like put them all in order of depths? Yeah, I did that. I did, yeah, on, on the Guardian, and it also mentioned that two hundred uh, thousand leagues under the sea is is uh, sorry. We were reading a newspaper. Twenty thousand leagues under the sea is is deeper than the entire planet. Yes, yes. Because uh, Jules Verne chose the wrong measurement. <laughs> For the title of the book. So, yeah, Fathom, not that deep. The Ludd Church blog had their hands on an, an other old newspaper, probably from a day or two later, because Peter C.S. Cox wrote a letter in reply to that article saying, uh, Sir, uh, I read with interest your article in the paper referring to the depth of the mermaid pool and how the legend has finally been exposed. This, of course, is not new, since a gentleman named Robert Plot plumbed it 274 years ago and discovered it to be little more than 12 feet deep. Then... In 1905, two young men named Nithsdale and Sheldon ventured into its frozen surface and drove a stake into the bottom of the pool. A more recent survey was carried out in September 1957 by John Hill, David Thompson and Peter Cox, the finding of which included depth, the surrounding flora and fauna, which have now been charted. Uh, This chart is now in the process of being embroidered to make a permanent record of these (laughs) facts. Well, sorry, this information is, is so crucial. You've Put it on a quilt. Yeah, yeah, basically, that is evidently the old print to PDF. It's <laughs> quilting. Just just standing standing on a frozen lake with a stick, shouting measurements to someone who's embroidering them as fast as they can <laughs> before it melts. You've got to have a special reader, annoyingly. Just to be clear, without wanting to imply a conspiracy going on here, could the Peter Cox writing this be the very same Peter Cox who carried out one of those investigations in the list? I d- Wait a minute. <laughs> I think it might it, have been. It doesn't been. say, and myself. No. It, could it be a Daddy Cox? Well, there's Peter C.X. Cox, and then he re- and then Peter Cox. So maybe he just signed it C.S. Cox. And, uh, yeah. You're right. When he says the process, the, the chart is now in the process of being embroidered, uh, but they had to stop to write to a correct a newspaper, perhaps. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. The thing about this pond is the level of the water does mysteriously always seem to stay the same, even when there's, you know, a drought going on and everywhere's drying up. This pond doesn't. And... Well, that is interesting, especially since it's been measured four times and they all got different results. Yeah. So the top stays the same, but the bottom keeps moving. Is that what we're saying? I guess so. That muddy, muddy bottom. So while the dr- so it says, while the dry grass was on fire and in danger of spreading, the fire brigade pumped approximately 90,000 gallons of water out of it. The fire chief, however, claimed that the level hardly varied. So maybe there is some other source of water there. Wow. They only wanted nine gallons, but there was a miscommunication. Yeah. The Ludd Church blog finishes by saying, in 1933, two local businessmen swam across the pool despite the warnings from friends. The two men experienced nothing unusual and reached the other side unharmed without having witnessed anything untoward. I mean, they must have experienced at least one thing that was unusual, unless that's how they always get to work. <laughs> like swimming across a pond is quite unusual for a businessman, isn't it? Yeah, it, I'm imagining in full business suits, bowler hat, umbrella, briefcase. That's unusual. Yeah, that's a good point. They're not frogmen. They're businessmen. The, the two genders, business and frog. Yeah. And then because this is an archived article, it's just got a little thing that says loading which I know is never going to load. <laughs> well, James, do these websites have visitor counters? Mm, no, but they do have comments. Do have space for comments. I will tell you one of those comments because it's quite quite uh, uh, it's quite a nice way to end after I tell you about the last viewing of the mermaid. 
So the last recorded sighting of the mermaid was in the mid 90s. Yeah, sighting is a more normal word. You said viewing like you're an estate agent. Yeah, viewing. I said viewing. It sounds, yeah, it sounds like she's for sale or something. It's a very spacious pond. Uh, the level never changes. Uh, r- come rain or shine. It's got a muddy bottom. So uh, that's convenient. It's got, it has got a muddy bottom. So Some people like that. In the mid 19th century, a group of locals attempted to drain the lake to see if it was bottomless. They began digging a drainage ditch, which can still be seen to this day. And at that point, the mermaid appeared from the lake and threatened to flood the nearby towns of Leek and Leekfrith unless they stopped immediately. And presumably they did, because those towns are currently still there. not flooded. And Alistair, I promised you a beautiful ending. It's a poem. Yeah, you did. You ready for a little a poem? poem? Yeah, there's a poem about the pond. Yeah. yeah go on. Written by Harriet Byrne a.k.a. Hattie Bum, there is a bench there with an etching that reads, In the summer at Mermaid Pool, as the grass grows all around, I think I sometimes hear her sing, for the mermaid's home I found. That's the poem. That's the end of the poem there. Oh, it's quite short. It's quite a short poem. That's the length of poem you like, James. Yes. A really short one. In, out, clear rhyme scheme, lovely stuff. (laughs) <laughs> no no messing around yeah come on no enjambment no no definitely not no internal rhymes just put the rhymes at the end of the lines so we know where they are w- was that the internet comment hold on <laughs> no that's the end of the internet comment oh so was the was the the poem a comment just so i understand the poem was the comment yes the poem was the internet oh was, okay and this is a poem in case oh, within nice. an internet comment oh how sweet so that is the tale of the clutching hands of Blakemere Pool. Really great. Good title as well. A.K.A. Mermaid 2, Electric Moogaloo. Oh, no, Alistair. I absolutely haven't finished at all. Sorry, is this some late-breaking mermaid news? Is someone handing you a sheet of A4? You want to know what happened to that guy that went looking for the mermaid pool at the beginning of the story from the cock inn? I forgot about that guy. Yeah. Do you want know what happened to that guy? Yes. He went there on this wintry, stormy night. He was within a few dozen yards of the spot when, to his absolute amazement, he heard the cries of a woman, apparently in some distress. Could this be the mermaid? Luring him to his doom? Or was it some sort of trick by his friends? You know, they were like, oh, yeah, yeah, you go do that. And then they, like, ran round and were going to scare him. But he could see through the wintry storminess... There were two figures by the side of the pool, a big man and a woman, and the man was dragging the woman into the pool, and she's screaming. So he shouted, Oi! Hey! What are you doing? Get out of it! Get out of it! And it says here, thinking quickly, the man called out as if to his companions, like, Oi, lads, look what's going on here? So that's quite quite a clever little trick. This guy's smart. Yeah, yeah, that's quite quick thinking. Well, you, I used to do that when leaving the house, when we were all leaving the house, and it might... There was, there'd been a spate of burglaries. We'd sort of had shut the door, shout as if to someone who was still in the house, like, I'll see you in a bit. Yeah. Uh, sharpening your knives. My uh, lover and confidant used to work with uh, a lady in a shop, and the lady, whenever they were alone, just two to, to women in the shop would mm. call upstairs to a fictitious third male employee who I think she mistakenly chose to call Harold, which is not a, a name that suggests Burley McKinnon. That's not a strapping young buck. No, no, it's not, is it? You want to say, you want it to be called like, yeah, Book or Clint, or even mm. that, it's not. What, uh, Chad or something. Crime hater. Batman. <laughs> Actual Batman. <laughs> That's just our co-worker, Batman. <laughs> <laughs> but Harold, I just pictured the guy off Neighbours, I don't think. He'd take a while getting down the stairs. To the, and it'd be to the sound of a tube. Although that was in York, and he he did, he did come he did come to York, the guy who played Harold from Neighbours. Ian Smith? Maybe not accompanied by any umbrellas. Yeah, I believe, and I don't, don't check, I believe he volunteered at the Cats Protection League in York for a day oh, for some reason. That is the sort of person who could easily protect a cat potentially not a, a small shop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I could see him protecting a cat, but perhaps not two, two damsels. That's him coming. That, he always used to come into the sound of a tuba mm. on Neighbours. Yeah, it Smith. was terrible for comic underscoring at that time, Neighbours. So, yes, 
the man and and the and the big guy dragging the woman ran away. He fell for the he fell for the ruse, and the guy he fell for the old Harold Gambit. Yes, uh, the guy went over to the woman and 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 like was like trying to see if she's all right and stuff. And it seemed that there'd had been some. This was the woman's previous lover, and you know uh, we can fill in the bad story there. But basically, this man was trying to murder her. But the guy took her back to the pot, took her to the the local pub, the Mermaid Inn, and she made a full recovery. Well, good. So she was rescued thanks to the yes. Mermaid. Yes, and in a as way. it says here, on this occasion, a Derbyshire mermaid had saved a life instead of causing one to be lost. A lot of bad guys in this story. A lot of terrible, terrible men. We started looking askance at single men, and I, I haven't shifted. No. Come on, no. come on, fellas. Come on, do better. Come on. So that is the tale of the clutching hands of Blake Mirpool. An excellent tale. Great title as well. So you're ready to score those hands? Yes. Yes. Okay. First up, Supernatural. But a boom. It's highly supernatural. Splish, splash. There's a mermaid in a pond. Mm -hmm. But not just a mermaid. There's all kinds of special industrial light and magic visual effects going exactly. on. Curtains of light. Yes. Columns of light. Yes. Which appear to be the same thing. It could be the same thing, just seen from a different angle. Extending pale hands, clutching and grasping. Yeah. Frogmen. A man who is a frog. <laughs> a man who is a business. <laughs> Most mysterious. And a, yeah, a fire brigade. Yeah, very hard to explain. A fire brigade. Yeah. <laughs> a fireman, a man who is a fire. Yes. Oh. 90,000 gallons. Of water. Of water. And it's still there. Hmm. I mean, I have no idea how much a gallon is. I only just found out how much a fathom was. <laughs> I think it's five out of five. It's quite right. Excellent. I'll take that. No, thank you. Yes, five for Supernatural. I'm glad you didn't go with the... Well, if mermaid's a real thing, then uh, all of this stuff is just... It's just science. <laughs> but that's more no, my for, angle than yours. <laughs> I would never... I would never doubt... My magic observation dot blog spots dot wordpress <laughs> Imagining forward slash uh, uh, what what if a mermaid lived in a pond dot html hey you don't need to imagine Staffordshire you can visit <laughs> <laughs> no if that website ever goes down Staffordshire will cease to exist <laughs> that is the last place where anybody is imagining Staffordshire and if nobody believes in Staffordshire it vanishes like fairies oh no <laughs> it's like Oh, we're all just people within the dream of the website Imagining Staffordshire when we're in Staffordshire. Uh, yeah, who is the dreamer? It's imaginingstaffordshire.blogspot. <laughs> At wordpress.com. Wordpress.com. The most authoritative earl available. And speaking of earls, not really, second category naming. Well, uh, Blake Mir and Black mm -hmm. Mir, very good names. we got the cock in. The cock in, We've got yes. Mr. Cox. We've got Peter Cox. It, it potentially times two. Well, I don't think we can put this in the episode, but if you were in school with with someone who was called Peter C. S. Cox, yes, you would pronounce it Peter C.'s Cox. <laughs> yes, I'm just saying. I'm just yeah. saying. If you were in school, that's that's what yes. would happen. I'm not endorsing yes. that. But we've got the British Sub Aqua Club. <laughs> I forgot about the British Sub Aqua mm -hmm. Club. And, the t and just the title, the, the, the Clutching Hands, the Grasping Hands, what the did you go with? The Clutching Hands of Blakemere Pool, which I think came from the Ludd Church blog, by the way. Did, oh, well, cr credit to the blog that I have criticised numerous yes. times. I I think um, I think it's like a really strong three. Nice. Because there's, there's three really good names, but the, it, it's just not, not quite enough to bump it up. A bunch of cocks. Okay, then. Okay, then. Th my next category... Muddy Bottoms. The famous blues singer. <laughs> yes. There's the muddy bottom of the pool itself, of course. Very muddy, most bottoms. There's the, there's the muddy bottom of the stick that the guy was going to stick in the ground. That would have ended up with a muddy bottom. Mm, okay, a potential muddy bottom. I'm sure many of the victims would have ended up with muddy bottoms, having been dragged to the, yeah. of the pool. Mm. That local serial killer probably slipped over. <laughs> Okay, Maybe. all right. I'm starting to sense you haven't planned this one as well as you might have. I just realised it was it was a good it was a fun name to say. It's a really good name, yeah. But yeah, Will Will of the Wisp. It might have a how very much the opposite of a muddy bottom. They have to have a muddy bottom, otherwise they can't 
be created because they come from out of oh because they come out of peat yes. okay yeah yes okay well then in that case it's a four I was going to say three yes. you've convinced me that every will of the wisp has a muddy bottom yes four out of five brilliant okay then my final category is oh it really draws you in oh so that applies to your storytelling technique. And uh, including the bit where you nearly forgot to do the ending. Yeah, the the ending that I'd teed up at the beginning. That that just adds s- stakes, yes. peril, the real possibility you might forget to finish the yes, story. Yes, you might never f- found out what happened to that man that time. I was actually researching a completely different story, and this caught my eye, mm. and then it really yeah. drew me in. And you've been completely captured by your relentless quest to find mermaids in the Peak District. Yes. Yes, draws that's drawn me into its orbit. The the white hands obviously in themselves just beckon you in, beckon you in, like a magnet. Even it even affected a frogman. He was just passing by in full frogman gear. I was like, and saw the pod and thought, I'll go in. I'll see how deep that is. Yeah, now. and two business guys, yeah, two businessmen, two top business blokes. If you look for pictures of this online, one of the one of the main pictures is someone just having a swim in it. And having been there recently, Alistair, I cannot imagine. It ever being a nice enough day to think, oh, I think I'll go for a swim in this brown <laughs> pool. The amount of people that Peter S. Cox cited who'd been drawn into the into the web. Yeah, 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 yeah. And Alistair, you the listener, I feel. Uh, you and the listeners. I've been drawn in. Yeah, I've been drawn in. And me plus the listener, that's another one at least. Exactly. Okay, James, I hope you're ready to embroider this. <laughs> yep. Okay, cuz I'm out here on the on the lake of your narrative and I'm I'm shouting over it's fine. Yes, get get it embroidered. Okay, well we'll get those embroidered up. We'll get those scores embroidered up. <laughs> Uh, sewn like, into the ledger. How can you just say that as if that's a normal thing to say? That must mean something. Yeah. I don't understand. It's in the process of being embroidered uh, for future use. It, but it, perhaps he means embroidered in a, in a figurative way, like fleshed out, like the way when when you tell the story, you embroider it with a few asides and funny voices. Maybe he means it but like that, that. You can't. But then it's. But he's saying it's being embroidered to pres- as as a permanent record of facts. Surely embroidery. Uh, he's talking nonsense. He's talking nonsense. He is sewing it into a quilt so that he's making never forget. a quilt. Every night he'll see that and think, yep, good. Those are the facts. That's how deep that pond is. Well, James, I wish we could embroider this episode in a quilt so I could wrap myself up in oh, it. Oh, yes. Have a little well, snooze. Well, I'm glad you've enjoyed the tale of the clutching hands. Well, I, actually, having said that, there was quite a lot of gender-based violence that I would just like to say we don't endorse. No, yeah, well, uh, yeah, absolutely not. Terrible, terrible pe- men. And it was men. Let's not end on that, though. <laughs> Let's not end on that, no, no. So, James, do you think you will ever find the Hayfield Mermaid? Uh, you know what, Alistair? On... That Facebook... Well, the, 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 th- the second most reliable website on the internet. The Hayfield Ramblers Club are doing an expedition to it on Saturday. The, like, the uh, the week after we've been oh, there. Oh, you missed it. They're going up to the mermaid's pool. Bring your bathers. But I'm pretty sure... I'm pretty sure I know where it is. One day, James. Yeah. I've got it narrowed down to about three fields. See, I've got a map, but the, the embroidery ran... <laughs> I got a map with the ink pad. If I'd had it embroidered, yeah, yes, you can't. You, yeah, thread can't. There's run. a lesson there. Just blundering into the local pub, gentlemen. Embroider me a map. Post haste. <laughs> I m- re- simply must find this mermaid. <laughs> Done, James, the CH of BP. Mm-hmm. Great story. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I can't believe I'm finding more mermaids. I can't believe it. When will you relent? Until all the mermaids have been catalogued and embroidered. <laughs> <laughs> Alistair, there are quite a few asides that definitely didn't make the cut, but will have made the bonus episode. You could go to patreon.com forward slash lawmenpod and join the law folk. Join, join us. us. And thank you very much to all the law folk who have already joined us and are on the law folk folk disco. (laughs) We're at the law folk folk disco. (laughs) The law folk discord. And thank you very much to Joe for editing this episode. Do we 
also have to apologise for where we think Missoula is. Uh, have we apologised for that yet? We from haven't. A few episodes ago, we haven't yet apologised for that. No, I don't know if we if there's time for the apology. It, it turns out it's not wherever we thought it was. Dallas. I don't know. I can't remember what we said. It's not there. It's somewhere else. It's where David Lynch is from. So I could have been doing the David Lynch accent yes. for Missoula the whole time. Unbelievable. What a missed opportunity. I know. I'm sorry about that. But I didn't know how to spell Missoula in my defence. 